Stellar Blade is available to play right now on the PlayStation 5 and recently I have been playing through this console debut from Shift Up. It's not something that I initially intended to play outside of work obligations, not for any particular reason other than I've got a backlog the size of Jormungandr, but to my surprise as I recorded gameplay for Sammy's review, which you can check out now, I actually found myself really enjoying this game and for one big reason, Stellar Blade is the best PS3 game on PS5, and I mean that as a compliment. Modern gaming takes many forms these days, but if you were to put a gun to my head, I'd scream out open world, I'd scream out live service, 100 hour epics and emotional storylines. Stellar Blade is none of those things. It's a single player, semi-linear campaign that can be completed in around 20 hours. This is a game that's perfectly okay with you playing it and leaving it behind, and I for one find that incredibly refreshing. Now at the time of recording, I'm just about halfway through the game, and as I've been fighting my way through the dilapidated ruins of a long lost earth, I couldn't help but feel the pangs of nostalgia for a bygone era of video game design. This in so many ways feels like an old school power fantasy that has two goals in mind, entertaining you and making you feel like a badass when it does so. It brought me back to the days of playing games like Splinter Cell Conviction or Bulletstorm, not immediately compatible, but they share a similar essence or vibe to them, where the whole point is just for you to have fun. Stellar Blade is set in a vast yet somewhat grim sci-fi universe, whereas Eve, a seventh airborne agent, you're sent along with her space colony battalion to reclaim Earth from a deadly, grotesque force named the Natiba. Shift Up, the game's developer, wastes absolutely no time thrusting you right into the action. Within about five minutes, you've seen spaceships explode, giant aliens firing missiles out of their mouth or something, you've fought a giant boss, and you've seen your mate killed by some awesome, winged, deviled creature. Stellar Blade dons this blasé simplicity that I found infectious. This is the first single player game that I played in a while where I almost felt like the story didn't actually matter that much, or at least I wasn't bothered with it, and I think that's fine as well. I couldn't have cared less about Adam or Lily, and some narrative beats were a bit eye-rolling. But more than anything, the story is the rails of a sightseeing roller coaster that blasts through the post-apocalypse at a breakneck pace. It's fun to see just how much the game revels in its setting, and not in the immersive sort of way, but the Oh, that's cool, kind of way. It's moving from flooded car parts to dingy dark labs and bridges falling apart with preposterously sized surroundings. It feels like a highlight reel of the sci-fi post-apocalypse in the best sort of way, even proudly announcing each of its new settings with a snazzy looking title card. There are even parts of the game that sort of switch up the format, like an area where you can't use your sword and it turns into a creepy Resident Evil-like experience, or on the smaller scale sliding down a chute and having to avoid the randomly placed razor things. This feels very PS3 era to me, harking back to a time when the level design was as much a part of the entertainment factor as the setting, the story, the characters, the gameplay. I'm not saying that modern games don't do this, because of course they do, but in Stellar Blade it feels like it's in the forefront of the experience. Moments like that actually make me dislike the open world segments of the game even more. To me, they felt like one of the few mandatory modern aspects of the game, used as nothing more than to tick a box and even extend your playtime a little. Sure, they look nice, but as soon as the game let go of the steering wheel for a bit, I feel like it loses its edge. Thankfully though, for the most part, you don't really need to bother with these areas too much, and if you're doing that, if that's your approach, then it means you're going to be flying through one boss encounter to the next. Enemies are designed by a real movie monster designer, which means just about every one of them looks disgustingly cool. And again, I feel like they service that roller coaster mentality. You're introduced to new kinds of enemies at a steady pace and never necessarily for the story, more just keeping things fresh, mixing up both the locales and the foes that you face. And of course, on top of the enemies, your combat style is steadily evolving. This game throws skill points at you like they're going out of fashion, which I was so damn relieved by. When I first booted up the skill tree and saw five different skill trees, 
I just thought to myself, oh great, here's another game that's gonna take 20 hours before it actually gets good. But no, the first boss at the end of the demo stage feels like it should be much further into the game than it is, even just with the skills you have available to you. You unlock the last skill tree just halfway through the game, and by that point, depending on how much side content you've completed, you could probably be the majority of the way through the rest of the trees. Stellar Blade feels like it appreciates your time in that sense, even going as far to unlock skill trees which already have a bunch of skills unlocked for you, which totally makes sense if you're supposed to be this top of the line soldier. What it all boils down to though is that Stellar Blade is a video game that isn't afraid to be a video game. It's not trying to convince you to sign on for a 40 hour work week, it's not trying to win anyone over with a video games actually tell great stories now level story. It's just a cool ass action game that wants to show you cool shit and make you fight cool enemies. I think a lot of games have forgotten that not everyone wants the graft to get that level of satisfaction and not everyone needs to go on some emotional transformative tale. That's why to me Stellar Blade is the best PS3 game on PS5. It takes me back to simpler times when I just wanted to fight ugly aliens and explore destroyed cities. And I think it's pretty cool that we have that in Stellar Blade. Thank you for watching folks, let me know how you've been getting on with Stellar Blade down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a wee like and even better, you could subscribe to the channel for more PlayStation video content. Anyway, until next time, I've been Aiden and this has been Push Square.